Management, Measurement, and the Consequences When managers are seduced by the siren song of unfathomable riches, largely unfettered by the notion of serving the interests of the corporation's long-term owners, they are easily tempted to focus on driving the stock price higher. When earnings growth goals are unrealistically high and the investment community brooks no interruptions in a regular progression of growth, the temptation to run the business around the numbers becomes overwhelming. To meet the numbers, important long-term initiatives may be the first cost to be cut, with downsizing, artfully renamed as right-sizing, next in line. Then financial standards are pushed to the limit. Finally, earnings become so illusory and subjective that credibility is lost. What can all too easily follow is the severe damage to the corporation's reputation and then its business happening right under the noses of our traditional gatekeepers. These gatekeepers, in short, failed to protect our corporate owners against managements that were all too eager to cast their firm's lot in terms of numbers rather than intrinsic values, corporate character, and meaningful self-appraisal. Even otherwise sound companies dwelt too heavily on what can be measured, market share, productivity, efficiency, product quality, costs, and set internal goals to achieve them. But business is hard and competitive, and when achieving these self-imposed measures proved impossible, it was only a matter of time until the measurements themselves were distorted and forced. When measures become objectives, they are often counterproductive and self-defeating, at times producing the very results that companies wish to avoid. The role of management should not be beating abstract numeric estimates, but improving the operations and long-term prospects of organizations by providing forceful and lucid direction, and by demanding a moral and ethical framework for behavior. The truth is that most business measurements are inherently short-term in nature. Far more durable qualities drive a corporation's success over the long term. While they cannot be measured, such traits as character, integrity, enthusiasm, conviction, and passion are every bit as important to a firm's success as precise measurements. Human beings are the prime instruments for implementing a corporation's strategy. Other things being equal, of course they never are, if those who serve the corporation are inspired, motivated, cooperative, diligent, ethical, and creative, the stockholders will be well served. Yet recent years have shown us that when ambitious chief executives set aggressive financial objectives, they place the achievement of those objectives above all else, above proper accounting principles and a sound balance sheet, even above their corporate character. Far too often, all of the means available, fair or foul, were harnessed to justify the ends. When the modus operandi of business managers becomes a ready acceptance of deceit and its shadow of self-deception, everyone else is doing it, so I will too, becomes a sort of Gresham's law that comes to prevail in corporate standards, and good management practices are driven out by bad. Clearly, management by measurement is easily taken too far. The management consultant's familiar bromide, if you can measure it, you can manage it, is just plain wrong. Managing to a measure ignores the myriad manifestations of the law of unintended consequences that are sure to ensue. I recall reading of a chief executive who called for earnings growth from $6.15 per share to a nice round $10 per share five years later, an earnings increase of more than 10% per year, but without a word about how it would be done. I don't believe that the greater long-term good of shareholders is served by establishing such a precise yet abstract numeric goal and then moving heaven and earth to meet it. Indeed, what worries me is not that it won't be achieved, but that it will. For in an inevitably uncertain world, the company may meet its goal only by manipulating the numbers, or even worse, relying on cutbacks and false economies and shaping everything that moves, including the human beings who will have to bend to the task to achieve the goal. But at what cost?
The companies that will lead the way in their industries over the long term will be those that have made their earnings growth not the objective of their corporate strategy, but the consequence of their corporate performance. Only then will the product makers gain their ascension over the numbers counters and deliver the value that their owners have every right to expect.